I was a young deputy sheriff serving as a member of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I had just finished my last official shift of the patrol training program. Tomorrow I would be on my own. But my first few days as a bona fide patrol deputy would not be easy. In fact, it would prove to be a test under fire. It was April 29, 1992. After securing my patrol car for the last time as a trainee, I walked into the briefing room to see a room packed with deputies and support staff. No one was talking. Everyone's gaze was fixed on the television. The scene on the television was a courtroom. Four LAPD officers stood with their attorneys awaiting the jury's verdict, waiting to hear if they would be found innocent or guilty of using excessive force against a man named Rodney King. The foreman of the jury read the verdict. Not guilty. While we were relieved for the four officers and their families, hearing the verdict actually increased the level of tension in the room. We all knew what would happen next. For the next few days, I would find myself in the middle of a war zone. The Los Angeles riots. Fires, rocks, bottles, gunfire, angry mobs, criminal opportunists, hundreds of arrests. While there were many law-abiding citizens who disagreed with the verdict, those who took to the streets and destroyed their own communities used the verdict as an excuse to victimize their neighbors. What better evidence could there be to prove the sinful depravity of mankind? Today I found myself on the same streets where, almost 16 years ago, I stood with baton in hand, suited in riot gear, wondering if I would make it home alive. And, like 16 years ago, I was nervous, but for an entirely different reason. You see, today, instead of a baton, I carried a sword, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Instead of hoping to arrest people, I was hoping that God would arrest the souls of lost people through the proclamation of the law and the gospel. And, instead of ordering people to submit to my authority, I pleaded with them to repent and believe the gospel and submit to the authority of God. What a loving God I serve to allow me to return to this place on such a different mission. Good morning, everybody! It is so good to see you today. Is today an exciting day or what? Wow! It is amazing that our country has finally come to this place, isn't it? Isn't this amazing? Wow. Tomorrow will probably be even a bigger day, won't it? Yeah! And today is all about freedom, is it not? Yeah! Today is all about freedom. Yeah! And before a man who certainly is a far better preacher than me, Martin Luther King, starts to preach again, I would like to talk, take a couple of minutes of your time to talk a little bit about freedom. Okay! Now, we probably live in the freest country in the world, right? Yeah. But we're right not here. completely there yet, right? We, we still have a ways to go. Certainly, we still have a ways to go. But what many of us don't realize is that none of us are truly as free as we think we are. You know, we might, I might be free to put on a headset and a PA system and talk to you like this. We might be free to go here and there. To have an African American president. So, so we do experience a certain level of freedom in this country. But personally, each of us, many of us, are not as free as we think, and this is why. Because many of us remain a slave to sin. If that, that's the reality. And it's a reality that I had to come to terms with about 20 years ago in my own life. See, I, I, thought, I thought I was a free man because I lived in the United States. I thought I was a free man because I was a deputy sheriff for the county of Los Angeles for 20 years. I thought I was a free man because I believed in God. But the reality was is that I wasn't free. I was still a slave to sin. And, and how I came to realize that is when someone held up the mirror of God's law in front of me to show me that I wasn't as free as I thought I was. You know, I had to come to terms with the fact that if I told so much as one lie, I wasn't free. I was a slave to sin. If I had stolen anything in my life, I wasn't free. I was, I was a slave to thievery. If I ever take it, I've taken God's name in vain, used his name to express disgust or excitement, I wasn't truly free, 
I was actually a blasphemer at heart. If, if I ever looked at a, a woman other than my wife to lust after her, right. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a free man. I was a slave to the sin of adultery. Right. And the stark reality I had to come to was that if I were to die and stand before God in that condition, because God is good, because He's holy and righteous and just, He would have to punish my sin. He would have to punish my sin. And the punishment God described for sin, whether or not I liked it or believed it, the punishment God had described for sin was eternity in hell. Yeah! And that shocked me when I came to that realization that although I counted myself to be a free person, that I was a slave to my sin, and because of that, I deserved to go to hell for all eternity. And then someone shared the good news of the gospel with me. You just heard Martin Luther King so dramatically preach, free at last, free at last. But when I heard the gospel, I realized that I could be free indeed. Because this is what God did. 2,000 years ago, God the Father, out of the most loving act of kindness anyone could ever give, God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Fully God and fully man and without sin. He was born of a virgin, just as the prophets predicted he would be 750 years before his birth. Unlike you and me, he was not a slave to sin. He never once transgressed the law of God. He was perfect in the He was God in the flesh. He was the God man. And in 30 to 33 years, into his perfect earthly existence, he voluntarily went to the cross. And before he did that, Jesus said this, Greater love has no one to miss than he who lays down his life for his friends. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, went to the cross and took upon himself not the punishment he deserved because he was sinless, but he took upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for every time we have violated the law of God in thought, word, or deed. And then he forever defeated death when he rose from the dead three days later. He forever defeated sin and death. And what God requires of us is not simply we believe that in our head, because the Bible says that the demons believe and they tremble. There are many people who go to church on Sunday and live like hell on the Saturday. Jesus, when God calls them a child of God, we call them a hypocrite. What God requires of us is that by faith we repent, that we turn away from our sin, and that by faith and by faith alone we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Jesus said something very, very profound. He said, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. And we can no more cause ourselves to be born again spiritually than we can cause ourselves to be born physically. None of us had any say into our, who our parents would be, where would we be born, the color of our skin, our nationality, the color of our eyes. We didn't sit in committee with God and our parents and say, this is how I want to be born. This is where I want to be born. And the same is true about us spiritually. Because we're all dead in our trespasses and sins, we need literally to be born from above. We need to be born again. And if God, through His infinite love and grace and mercy, causes you to be born again, extends to you the free gift of eternal life that only He can give, then you will repent of your sin. You will forsake your sin, and by faith and by faith alone, you'll receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. So folks, uh, first of all, I'm raising my voice, obviously not because I'm angry with anybody, but because I want you to hear. And, and I care about you. I, I love you very much. I may never see any one of you again. But the last thing I want is for anybody to perish in their sin. Now, I can't judge a single soul. The Bible says there's only one lawgiver and judge. There's only one who's able to save and destroy. And his name is not Tony. That is God Almighty. And because I love you, because I love you, because I care for you, I have to warn you about the wrath to come yes. if you are already not secure yes. in Jesus Christ. Yes. So if you're here today, enjoying this great day of celebration. Yes. And if you have yet to turn from your sin and put your trust in Christ alone to save you, I beg of you, I plead with you, do that today while God has given you time. Yes.